Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's the third week in July. I hope you're having a marvelous summer. This week's video is going to be about our tandem bike. Now Julie and I have been tandem riders since 1981. We've been biking a long time but that doesn't make us an expert on tandem bikes as a whole. We haven't, this is the only tandem we've ever owned. I've rebuilt it several times and in fact, I rebuilt it last summer. The drivetrain was pretty much worn out. And uh, I went into our biking log and it's the second time I've totally rebuilt the bike. And we had over 10,000 miles on it for this last rebuild. But after the rebuild, it really rides sweet. Today we are taking a little bike loop over to Turnerville. It's a great loop. And as you can see, just kind of some rural mountain scenery <laughs> well tandems are, are really an interesting way to bike they can be really polarizing they're not very popular you know some people <laughs> like to use the term uh, divorce makers we've had ours for a really long time and we're still together i actually enjoy riding our tandem bike and I also like riding a half bike. That's a term that tandem riders use for a standard conventional bike. <laughs> what makes riding a tandem so much fun? Well, if you get along with your partner, you can go on long distance tours for many, many hours. And you really don't have any boredom because you've always got somebody to have a conversation with. And when I'm out riding my single bike for really long distances, I hate to say it, sometimes it can be just a little bit boring. It's nice to have somebody to have a conversation with. Isn't that right, Julie? Sure. <laughs> that didn't sound too enthusiastic. Yes. I bet a lot of people wonder what it's like to be the stoker. The person in the front is, that steers the bike is called the captain. And the person on the behind is called the stoker. So what's it like being back there? Um, I gotta say that one thing about being a stoker is you have to be willing to put it all in because if you don't, the person in the front's gonna pay dearly for that lack of effort. So that's your job. And uh, Tom's asked me if I would prefer have been on to be on front, but you know, in reality, I don't mind being the pusher on the bike. Um, the thing is, is you have to trust the individual that's riding the bike up front that has all the control. And uh, as long as you have that, and that individual is willing to share signals when we're gonna stop, if we're gonna shift, if there's something that changes, then being in this position is actually very comfortable. So I have lots of years of this. I haven't had any desire to change from the back to the front um, and I love this bike and it's not that I don't like biking by myself because I do but I do love this bike when we go out so it's that's kind of my feeling about it it's really funny because one of the cliches that we often hear we hear it every year out somebody will come by and they'll roll the window down and they go she's not pedaling and I know it's funny, we've heard it so many times, but the truth of the matter is, is on a tandem bike, if you're both not putting an equal energy, you can tell it. And uh, I know when Julie's cranking hard, she knows when I'm cranking hard. And likewise, if I'm slacking off, she can feel it. So it's really a pretty much a mutual effort. You know, when people think about tandems, <laughs> one of the things that comes to mind is they're really slow on the uphill. And, you know, I think in the past that's mainly because, you know, tandem bikes were so much heavier than, you know, your traditional half bikes. And uh, this one comes in, it's an old bike, it's a steel frame bike. Uh, comes in around 56 pounds, so obviously it's going uphill, it takes more work than if you're on a, you know, a 20 pound road bike. But on the uh, upside is, on the downhills, boy, do they really go fast. 
and they go fast because there's so much weight. You know, the, you have two combined riders, you know, plus your gear, plus the weight of the bike. And uh, then you have the wind, you know, the wind resistance is much less than two people on separate bikes because the person on the backside is just adding weight, not really adding a whole lot in the way of, of drag. So downhills, you can just, the gravity just takes over and, and you can just really, really go. And uh, it's one of the things that, you know, single bike riders don't think about, and that is going downhill with brakes. Now this is a, a, an old bike, and this was long before they had disc brakes, and so we just have standard clincher brakes on this. And you have to be real careful with the tandem that you don't, uh, you don't break too much. If you break too much and you heat the rims up, you can pop the tires. Back in the day, um, some of the tandems had drum brakes on them and uh, on the rear wheel, and that drum brake was controlled by the stoker in the back. We've never had that on ours. Ours was pretty much designed as sort of a, at the time, what was considered a mountain tandem, or today it might be considered more of a gravel bike. But uh, I have to, we have to be careful on long downhill runs that we don't overheat the brakes, so we tend to let it run free, and uh, well, just watch as we go down this hill. Now you may be wondering, now that we're both getting up in our years and we have e-bikes, whether we'll continue to ride this tandem bike. And the shorter answer is absolutely. We're going to continue to ride this tandem bike. It's just too much fun. And you know, it's much different than riding our e-bikes. But of course, you know, I've got a motor behind me when I'm on the tandem, so I'm not sure it's a whole lot different. All joking aside, tandems are really a blast. They're not for everybody, but they're certainly for us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about tandems, leave them down below. And until next time, be safe and be kind and pray for peace.